Here we're going to continue to look at gravitational potential energy, and we're going to look at kind of an interesting comparison between how it is our two equations for potential energy uh, end up uh, calculating the conversion of that potential energy into kinetic energy, and uh, when do they begin to differ. So we're going to start by going back to our old potential energy function, mg, mgy. So we're going to use mgy, and no air resistance, so kinetic plus potential equals kinetic plus potential. We just want to see, we want to focus in on just those potential energy functions and what difference do they make in our calculations. So we're, for both cases, going to be starting off by just dropping the object from a, an initial height h above the surface of the Earth. So for our old calculations, our potential energy mgh of joules will be 100% converted into kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Now it's okay to say potential energy final is uh, zero. Our lowest point in the problem is going to be the surface of the Earth, which when we're using the old equation, uh, we certainly can let the surface of the Earth represent zero potential energy. The m's cancel out, and we get our very quick, easy, nice equation for the speed that the object will have when it strikes the ground. So let's box this equation because we're going to get back to using that again in a moment. And what we're going to do now is compare it to dropping the object and letting the potential energy function negative g, mass of Earth, mass of object that we drop, divided by r, the center of mass to center of mass distance between the object and the center of the Earth, govern the motion, govern the transfer of energy. So we again are letting it fall from rest, so kinetic energy initial equals zero. Now we cannot just ignore the potential energy final or let it equal zero because our potential energy final is based on the center of mass to center of mass distance. So we now have the radius of the Earth is our center of mass to center of mass distance for the final value when it strikes the Earth. We are starting it at a height h above the Earth. Again, the m's are going to cancel out for us, so we see our m's all cancel out. We're ignoring air resistance again, so we're trying to be consistent or as consistent as we can be. When we do our algebra, we get another expression for the velocity. And basically what we want to do is compare, let me go back and make that a green one, the big green velocity we have here with our old blue velocity that we have here. And as it says at the bottom of the page, we're going to do some computational physics and utilize Excel to do this for us. So your task is to program in, right, put in the equations, the blue equation, right, for the velocity that we have here. So type that in as an equation into Excel. So you'll be able to increment. H will be a parameter. So your, your A numbers that you're plugging in here will go in as your h's into the equation. You're going to put in your green velocity here as an equation. And again, let h go in to the equation here. And then we are going to look at the percent difference between those two values and see when we get a percent difference way over here. That is 5% so that if we went further with our h values, we would get greater than a 5% error. So it gives us an idea that if we want to go back and use the easier mathematical expression, this one, right? Well, what height are you going to be at before you would make this energy calculation and be outside of this 5% uh, error range in terms of your values? You know, maybe as a first look calculation, it's easiest, right, to just plug in the numbers using this equation, but we would kind want to kind of know that we're in a range where our final answer wouldn't deviate horribly from the exact answer we would get uh, using the correct universal gravitation uh, function that Newton gave us. So there are many good uh, YouTube um, 
tutorials on Excel. If you've never used Excel, uh, I certainly can help you out as well. If you uh, want to talk, talk to me individually about uh, what you're looking at programming in Excel. Uh, but I do want you to, to give it a shot yourself, see what you can program in. You have to think about you know, what's a reasonable increment? Is Excel going to be making, you know, two million calculations because you're, you're incrementing one centimeter at a time? So you have to think about, you know, what's a reasonable increment to use in your calculations. And it gives you an idea of uh, how someone using a computational physics approach to address a physics problem, uh, their considerations and what we would have to go through. So hopefully it'll be a, an interesting and fun example. And uh, not terribly frustrating for you. And as I said, if, if Excel is causing you frustrations, um, we certainly can talk about uh, what you're looking at in your Excel calculations.